Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Marcia's Lounge. I am your host, Dr. Marcia, and I am so excited to be back with you again for another episode. I got my friend up here today. We're going to have a good, good conversation. But before we go any further, I have a disclaimer. Well, a two-part disclaimer. First, don't get mad at me. It is what it is. It is. it is what it is. And the second part is that the opinions expressed here are those of me and Mr. Anderson, who you will meet momentarily. But here at, the, at Dr. Marcia's Lounge, the lounge, sometimes that's what we call it for short. You know how we love to give somebody a nickname? Uh, yeah. The lounge. <laughs> <laughs> here we discuss everything under the sun. And this week we are discussing an important topic. We're going to be talking about... Finances. <laughs> Finances, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. That's all I can say is mm, mm, mm. Yeah, money. That money, baby. Money, money, money. That's what we're talking about today. But I have a very special guest, my friend, Mr. Gerard Anderson, who is a financial coach. And I, I'm not going to steal his thunder. Let him tell his own story about who he is. And then just tell us a little bit about how you came to be. A financial coach. Yeah. Doc, thank you so much for allowing me to share this space with Glad you, man. It's always here. a pleasure to, <laughs> to, to, to be on your show. But uh, but yeah, man, my story started back um, like most people. Um, was told, go to school, get your education, get your degree, get your well-paying job, and you work till retirement. <laughs> and that's exactly what I started off doing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so I uh, went to school, got uh, my undergrad in psychology, got a master's. And so um, I got my first job, which I was so excited because I knew I was going to make at least about $40,000. Uh-huh. And so I ended up working where I did an internship at. But Doc, I didn't check to see what my salary was going to be because I was just so excited to have a job. Right, right. And don't you know that they started me off with $24,000 with a master's degree? They should be ashamed of themselves. I see. They should have been ashamed. And to add insult to injury, they laid me off after two years because of budget cuts. So that was strike one and strike two Mm -hmm. that really showed me it's like, okay, I'm going to have to find a better path for my life because Mm -hmm. this go to school and work and till you retire isn't promised. So that was really the first thing. And then the second part started. um, So I eventually got another job, worked for 20 years as a school social worker. Wow. But around 20 years was when COVID happened. Uh And um, I just got a place where I was burnt out. And I needed a change for my own mental and emotional Mm well-being. And so uh, I decided to leave my job. And I kind of Say what now? Yeah, yeah. I I, I decided I had to die for my own well-being. You know, I, I... Hey, I need I'm to just be- giving him a hard time. <laughs> but yeah, that mental health piece, we, we talk about that a lot too. But go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but I guess I need to say too, I didn't leave my job to go and find another job. I was going to take the leap of faith to become an entrepreneur, <laughs> which is what I started out doing. Uh-huh. And so it went really well for about three months until that last paycheck from my job came through. Uh-huh. And after that, the realities of financial literacy hit me smack dab in the face. And so what it, that period of time caused me to realize I didn't have any consistent income coming in. I was doing DoorDash, Grubhub, Instacart, all of those just to keep the bills paid. Mm-hmm. And it was at that point that I realized, dang, finances is really at the intersection of every aspect of my life. And it caused me to really take a look at myself and ask myself, what have you been doing for the last 20 years? I didn't, Doc, I barely had any savings. I had something saved for a retirement, but for the first time I really saw it's like, I hadn't really been doing anything intentionally where my finances was concerned. And so that's how I really got started with okay. focusing on financial literacy and, you know, getting your personal finances in order. Yeah. But one thing that you said, and I, I think it's ingrained in us as people that you would, well, it, not so much for 
what is it, Gen Z? What Gen? I don't know what Gen it is. Yeah, man, you got Gen Z, Gen X, Z, Y, Gen but, yeah. X, whatever. <laughs> but for us, it was ingrained in us that you you work. 30 years you pay into or you receive a pension yeah and if you're really lucky you have a 401k yeah and um nobody really had the conversation with us about how those things could impact really impact us nobody talks to us about that nobody says hey well listen you know what about some other options so i i think it's really um it's brave of you that you stepped out on faith but I do have to ask, <laughs> how did that conversation go with your wife? Well, let me just say, I'm lucky to still be married right now. <laughs> I'm lucky to still be married. But you know, the crazy thing was that initially she was in agreement with it until she realized that I didn't have a plan. And I was just out there on a, a women a prayer and uh -huh. walking by faith and God is going to make a way but I had no financial plan and you know you, you know women you all really <laughs> value the security and I I took all the security out of our household man <laughs> I mean robbed the whole household of security so I will say that was probably the toughest year of my life, mm -hmm. but it taught me so much. And I did eventually, you know, after eight months, his wife gave me that Start laugh. Give me that side eye. She, she gave me that laugh. All right, Joker. And so I said, <laughs> okay, I'm going to go start looking for a job right, tomorrow. Right. And so I started looking for another job and I found it, which is how I met you. But this time I understood the role that that job played in my overall goals for my life, which I didn't have before. Okay. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Did you find out what the salary was before you <laughs> signed? Because <laughs> last time he just signed that contract and didn't look at the Did you ask them people? Oh, man. You better believe, man. I went in there just like, first question that I had, how much does this pay? But, you know, you go through those experiences and you have to learn the lessons uh, and don't continue making the same mistakes, man. That was a financially, I think that's you. T you hit on it because we don't talk about it. We don't know what we don't know, mm -hmm. and we do what we do based on what we don't know, or based on what we've done before, or based on what we've done before, yeah. whether it's working or not. And that's how we stay stuck. And that's why these type of conversations are so important. Yeah. Um. And, and we talk all the time about knowledge is power. It's not just a, a, a saying, it's true. You have to be knowledgeable about your money. Oh. You have to be knowledgeable about your finances. You have to be knowledgeable about your plan. And I don't know how, how deep we can go with this show, but do you think it's um, by accident that they don't teach us anything about money no. in our public education no system. it's not that's how the wealthy and there's a difference friends between being wealthy and rich come on now that's how the wealthy remain wealthy because they they start talking to their children probably at birth in the womb yeah about finances we we don't have those conversations our children just they are the beneficiaries yep. of the things that we do and don't know what to do with it when they get it. Don't know what to do with it. Don't know what it took for us to get to that point. Right. So we those those conversations are imperative. I cannot stress it enough. If you're not having conversations with your children from a very you can break it down into terms that they can understand. Break it down. And if it means that, you know, you every time you give them a dollar and you want to tell them you need to save this this portion up, get them in that habit. And, Doc, why that's so important? Because if you don't start teaching them that stuff when they're young, then you're going to end up 30, 40, 50 years old having to deprogram yourself from all of the false wrong things that you had been taught mm -hmm. your whole life yeah. to try to break free from those things and that's hard to do yeah. after 40 years Shh. ask me how i know that too <laughs> man <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's just like i said you i cannot stress it enough and i know gerard um, agrees that it's important 
to have those conversations. But here's the other thing. Let me say one more thing with okay. that. In addition to those conversations, you also have to take responsibility for your own financial literacy your own financial IQ. You can't just be like, well, they didn't teach us anything about that in school. Money impacts every single area of your life. Yes. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And for you to walk around here ignorant and not knowing how to manage your money, how to make money, how to multiply your money, you basically automatically adding an extra load to your life. So, you have to take responsibility. Let me say that one more time. You've been around time. the kids too long. That's something else. That, that's a you problem. <laughs> we have to take responsibility yeah. for, for that ourselves. Yeah. Um, something else I wanted to touch on. Yeah. We, we talk about, you know, going to a job. And please, again, this disclaimer, I'm not telling keep, anybody. Keep, keep your job. Keep that job. Take it I'm from not me. Tell, I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'm not telling you to quit your job. But what other things, you know, what are some ways we have to help people identify, and when I say people, like our children, our our nieces, nephews, help them identify other ways to get money, other legal ways to get money. (laughs) Important to make sure you include that legally. (laughs) Legal ways. I said legal ways. So, you know, basically how how can they um, or what can they do to get some residual income. You know, before I get to that, the first step that they should take is to make a decision that that's what they're going to do. A lot of people just don't make the decision. Mm -hmm. I'm going to figure out how to produce another stream of income. Set a goal Mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. How much extra money do you want to have coming in? But here's the the beautiful thing. There's so many different ways that we can make money now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they have this whole thing called the gig economy. So there's so many. When I was out of my job for that period of time, you know, I did DoorDash, Mm -hmm. Instagram, Mm -hmm. Grubhub. So you can start on that baseline level and do that. But that's the gig economy, guys. That's, that's the, the gig economy. Mm-hmm. But in addition to that, on a deeper level, we were created to be creative beings. So why not create something? So is that what that T-shirt means? Wealth is in your <laughs> DNA. See, how that was a great segue, wasn't it? He's amazing. Wealth is in your DNA. So you were created to do creative things. Oh boy, you 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 going deep now, Doc. <laughs> so let me tell you where I got this from. I was actually it was actually a scripture in the Bible in Genesis uh-huh. where God said, "Make man in my own image and in my likeness." And then it says later on, "Let them have dominion." So I was thinking about that one day, and I was like, "Can you imagine how many different things that entails in being created in God's image?" We and. That verse, it follows uh, the creation of the earth. And so to me, that spoke, we were created to be creative beings. But from a wealth standpoint, a lot of times we think that money and wealth is something to pursue outside of us. But the first thing that you have to do is understand how your God created you. He put that you are wealth. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I said... It's not something to go and get first. It's understanding it's in me. And, and once you get that, that part yes. straight, the obtaining of it becomes much easier. But you have to realize wealth is already on the inside of you because that's who we are. That's how wow. we were created to be. Wow. So for those of you out there who are thinking about a master plan, yeah. Y'all too young to know about thinking of a master plan. But while you're thinking of that master plan, it's already in you. And we're going to tell you later how you can get these t-shirts. But it's already in you. So you have to develop that plan and implement and follow through. Yeah. Follow. That's another big thing. I mean, it's, it's great to have great ideas. But what are you doing to make those great ideas come to life? <laughs> You better preach. Am I preaching to here? <laughs> what are you doing to make those great ideas come to life? And and bef- I'm going to let you talk, but I want to also say, don't be afraid to do something different than what you expected to be doing. Ooh, 
Say that again. Say that again. Don't be afraid to do something different than what you expected to be doing. Ooh, man. Oh man, that's so that's so huge right there. And a lot of times we have trouble breaking out. What I call the default program. Mm -hmm. Like your life, someone already has a plan for you. If you don't have a plan for your life, shoot, I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> hey, come and do this. So it's so important yeah. that you really take time to think what direction do I want my life to go in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that may go against the grain, like even with entrepreneurship or you know, in this day and time, college isn't as isn't as automatic as it once yeah. was. Yeah. And so sometimes you have to go against the grain, but you have to be okay with doing that because you got to follow follow us on the inside. Follow us on the inside with a plan. You okay. better keep on emphasizing that yeah, plan with a plan. Don't, <laughs> don't want, no, but any of our young people watching you go home and say well dr marcia said i ain't got to go to college no yeah. that's not what i said have a plan and and if, if if that plan doesn't involve college make sure you you map it out be able to say I, i'm gonna start here i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that don't just say well i ain't going and i guarantee you whatever that plan is is going to require finances so you have to have a financial plan as well yeah i always like to use this example like before you go before you decide to take a trip or before you decide to use your gps what's the first thing that you're going to need to know before you you have to enter a destination where are you going <laughs> where are you going where are you going yes yes and so if you don't have a destination not to be working on a job for 40 years not to be living paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. by default what you think you're gonna be doing lost <laughs> just straight lost so that that's really important guys and, and we can't stress it enough have a, plan. have a plan um the other thing i wanted to to talk about is if a person recognizes you know what i'm i'm not financially literate mm -hmm. and it, don't be ashamed of that there's a lot of people who are not can they contact you? Oh, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. okay. Let me say this first. I'm not a, a financial advisor, and so I'm not going to tell you where to invest your money. That's not what I do. I'm a coach, so I'm going to help you kind of get your finances in order. But um, as a financial social work coach, that's what I got my certification in. Before we deal with those external parts of finances, we deal with those money stories from your past that's impacting how you feel about money today. We uh -huh. deal with those attitudes, those beliefs, those financial traumas that you may have gone through that you never dealt with. We got to deal with those first mm -hmm. and then we'll get to the, you know, let's increase your financial IQ, you mm -hmm. know, let's learn more about investing and saving. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to answer your question, yeah, please do contact me. I'm just going to let you know we're going to go inside mm -hmm. first and then we're going to come outside. But um, they can reach me on my website. Okay. At uh, Gerard, that's spelled J A R O D A Anderson. Okay. That's spelled with a O N dot com. And I have a free uh, course on there that the listeners can take. It's called life beyond the paycheck Ooh. we got to learn how to <laughs> live beyond just the limitations of our paycheck so you can take advantage of that and i also do a free financial health assessment okay so that's just a 30 minute conversation asking some questions let's get some goals down and then let's create a roadmap on how we're going to get there and i got a whole bunch of stuff on there but if you go to my website uh, you can take advantage of some free stuff and my courses uh, a book that i wrote five star mentality it's all on my website awesome awesome so after you take advantage of the free stuff purchase <laughs> the book you want to y'all like staying at five star hotels come on why now. not have five star finances and you're not gonna stay at a five star hotel or have five star finances until you develop a five star mentality oh we and that's what the book is about okay you got to deal with the inside first yeah so i'm always going to go back to let's deal with what's inside first mm -hmm. and then we can worry about or focus our attention on the external but one more thing that you said you got to be willing to invest in yourself yes you got to be willing to invest yes in yourself. and it 
and there's the old adage it takes money to make money <laughs> so you you have to and that's part of the investing in yourself and so here's someone that you you can talk to him you can reach him yes please make sure you're you're doing that so that you can put yourself in a position to be where you want to be in one two five years and let me uh say this so uh I'm doing a, a, a TikTok um, on TikTok. Yep. I'm doing 31 days, 31 tips to move close to the financial independence. And w- the thing that I talked about today is forgiving yourself for past financial mistakes or mishaps mm-hmm. you may have mm-hmm. made. And so a lot of times we are we have taken on so much guilt and condemnation and shame from things from the past. Right. So a lot of people, they don't even feel comfortable asking for help because like, Oh, they're going to judge me or they're going to see that I don't have my finances in order. And we have to get over all of that. You got to forgive yourself for whatever mistakes you may have made, uh, whatever things may have happened. You got to get over that and, let it go learn a lesson from it now don't go back and repeat the same thing <laughs> right but, but for, that's and that's hard for a lot of people yeah. that, that forgiving yourself we're we're quick to forgive other people but don't forgive ourselves so i i like you said you're going to start on the inside and forgiving yourself yeah. is a, is key it's key so um one more thing i want to ask you what if what if someone um wants to also be a financial coach do you coach them on how to be a coach so i got my certification through this um program it's uh, like i said it's called financial social work and i never heard of it but the beautiful part about it is that it connects the internal parts of finances to the external. So if somebody is interested in doing that, if they want to get that certification, uh, they can go to this website. It's called. Don't, uh-uh. You don't do no. We're not free advertising <laughs> for them. <laughs> I know that's right. Doc. No, we're not. You're going to go to Gerard A. Anderson. Come on. And and hire him. And that is a perfect example of why mentorship is so important. Because we don't know. I didn't know that. But <laughs> mentorship, you got to have big brother, big sister. Dog, you better not do that. Uh, no. <laughs> and it's the same thing, financially speaking, too. So I think you know you call me. Exactly. And uh, I'm going to help you and get it right. And he'll get you on the right path. <laughs> help you develop and implement a plan. Remember that plan is really key. So um, I just want to thank you for taking time thank out of you. your busy, busy schedule. Y- y'all, you better get on his schedule before he blows up because <laughs> he's it'll be tight. You'll be like, well, you don't have another appointment for six weeks. But you go ahead and get in there now. Make sure you're going to his website. Yeah. I also ask that you like, comment share subscribe to dr marcia's lounge we look forward to seeing you every week and i i wanted to share with you that this beautiful t-shirt I unstoppable Un, you are unstoppable come on now you're unstoppable so you can go to my website www.cradleconsulting.com get just get you a t-shirt your sister your auntie your mama your cousins get all of them a t-shirt <laughs> so that everybody knows that you are unstoppable you can also find books there um, empowering greeting cards I, i've been busy i know i've you been have busy been. but i'm i'm grateful for that so i do ask that you visit the website and purchase several things and doc let me just thank you for creating this platform and giving people like myself a voice and an outlet so really do appreciate that don't take that for granted don't take it lightly so you keep on trailblazing as well because we right behind you doc (laughs) thank you you are most welcome so again thank you for joining us for this episode We look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a wonderful day, evening, whatever time it is, and stay hydrated. We are in hot Atlanta, and it is hot down here. (laughs) So make sure you're drinking water. Take care.